I'm Logan Crawford, and right now on Spotlight, Annette Tarpley showcases her passion for poetry in her book, Poetry Potpourri. This eclectic collection represents a deeply personal journey for the author, as it includes poems from various stages of her life, including a poignant piece written at the age of 17 following the tragic loss of her father and brother in a plane crash. The bulk of the collection was penned in a prolific four-month period, marking a time when the poet rediscovered and embraced her poetic talent. Poetry Potpourri offers readers a glimpse into the author's heart and mind, revealing the therapeutic power of poetry in navigating life's most challenging moments. We're delighted to have this very talented poet and writer join us here today on Spotlight. We thank our team at Atticus Publishing for helping us put her in the spotlight today. And we ask viewers like you to support writers like her by subscribing to our channel and by purchasing her wonderful book. The links are below this interview. Annette, great to see you here today on Spotlight. Thank you so much. My pleasure, Logan. Thank you for having me. My pleasure. Great to talk to you. Great to see you today. Poetry Poopery is a perfect title for this book because it is a little bit of everything, which is wonderful and lovely at the same time. A lot of it was written during a writing tirade of yours, four months long. Tell us a little bit about that period and why you wanted to get it done within a certain set amount of time. Well, COVID happened, so it was kind of during that time. Um, but I had written, I was going through a divorce about seven years ago, and I wrote a poem um, that is one of the four that I know by heart is over three minutes long, Broken Dreams, because it was my therapy. Mm -hmm. um, but I had recited that to so many people, and everybody said, oh, you need to get that published. Mm -hmm. And then when I talked to a publisher about getting it published, they said, oh, how many poems do you have? And I said, I have maybe 20. They said, oh, no, you need at least 60. So over four months, I wrote over four, I wrote over 100 poems. And uh, and then that's kind of the history of it. And Wonderful. it kind of went from there. Wonderful. Yeah. And Broken Dreams is the uh, poem you have memorized, right? Yes. Yes. Could you recite that for us just so the folks at home can get a little feel? For I you could. Writing? It's been a while. So if I have an awe moment. Um, That's OK. We'll, we'll make yeah. that a dramatic pause. That's okay. what we actors do. We are stumbling for the words. But so I'll it tells the story about the relationship, the good, the bad. And in the end, I'm strong. Hmm. So um, broken dreams. A love that flourished. So, so fresh and new. A man who promised to be loyal and true. My heart, I gave you to hold and to keep in arms they once held me as I went to sleep. Lips, they merged, holding steadfast at night. The morning then dawned and the sun did grow bright. You promised me you would love me for a lifetime, you said, our vows now spoken with a life together ahead. The love and the marriage was so wonderful and bliss, but soon I realized something was amiss. You grew, so you grew so so distant and cold, you're, wait, uh, wait, and, ah, see, there you go. Yeah, I put um, you on the spot, but we get a feel for it. It's really yeah, a beautiful yeah, poem. Yeah, it, it, anyway, it's this, it's this great poem. I wrote another one um, mm -hmm. more recently. This I have several videos on YouTube. Um, mm -hmm. And Alan Johnson, who is a, a great, was a great musician, a great narrator. I mean, even um, Sir Anthony Hopkins called him. And after you heard him on the BBC, he actually said my name to him this year. Wow. Um, but um, he was a great narrator and he would compose these beautiful videos. But interestingly enough, the one that is most popular is one that I narrated. And it, and I know by heart, and this one isn't very long, but it was written when I went to go see a patient. I'm a nurse practitioner. Mm. who does psychiatry um and so i was seeing this patient on a ventilator and she'd always why our eyes would light up and she'd smile whenever i'd recite a poem and the last time i saw her she mouthed the words will you remember me oh that's and beautiful. i said yes i will always remember you you know sometimes when you meet someone once yeah and so if you wouldn't mind me reciting that, it's I not would love to hear it. Love to hear it. Like I said, the more I hear your words, the more I hear your words spoken in your voice, the better feel we get for your work, which would be great. Yeah. So will you remember me? Once I was vibrant and full of life. A bold and strong woman was I. Youth and energy enveloped my spirit, invincible and spry. 
no constraints to what I could do, only limited by my mind. Of a tough stock I was made, yet I was gentle and I was kind. Will you remember me when I'm gone? Will you remember my smile? Will you remember the dance of my eyes, knowing me was worthwhile? I'm older now. My hair is gray and it's lost its luster and sheen. I'm still young at heart. I'm really not as old as I seem. My mind is clear as I think what impact I have made. Wrong choices I once chose. Tears line the path I paved. Will you remember me when I'm gone? Will you remember my smile? Will you remember the dance of my eyes, knowing me was worthwhile? I miss you, my friend. Now you are gone. Your spirit is at rest. I miss your laugh, miss your voice. Your smile was always best. An impression you made within my soul, kindred spirits from the start. I felt your angelic spirit ascend when from this earth you did depart. I will miss you, my friend. Dazzle the stars with your smile. Glow of the moon dances in your eyes, knowing you was worthwhile. Beautiful. That is really, really very, very beautiful. Such a lovely tribute to this woman you know, knew who passed. Um, and she's immortalized now in your words yeah. and in your poem. And that's lovely as well. You've got quite a diverse career, poet and nurse practitioner. I don't think I've ever seen that uh, phrase used together in uh, one word, in one sentence rather. But uh, that's a great, uh, great career that you have there because you're helping people with their spiritual needs as well, with your words and your poetry, as well as the mental health needs you help them with as a um, nurse practitioner. You lost your brother and your father at age 17. That is unbearable when I, when I read about it, when I think about it, because it's an age where you think anything is possible. You're aware of everything. You've got the mind of an adult, but still the heart of a child. It's yeah. such a tough age to lose a parent and a brother. Yeah. Tell us yeah. a little bit about that part of your life, if it's not too painful to share with us. Yeah, it was it was a painful part of life, but I feel like I have two very powerful angels up there. <laughs> so, yeah. um, but my dad was a very great person, and he, um, for many years, I said I only had him for seventeen years, and then I changed it to I had him for seventeen years. Right. I knew who he was, and he influenced me, and he would be so proud of me now. Um, but he was a great man. Um, he was a musician and uh, had a transportation business, but he was a musician. He played bluegrass music. When I was 10 years old, I remember waking up in the middle of the night and he was screaming. And it was the next morning, I was like, what, what, what were you screaming about? And he said, I had a nightmare. And I had a nightmare that I was in a plane crash and my Martin guitars were strung out all over the place. And um, he only was 37 when he died, but he knew he was going to die young. Yeah. Because at 37 years old, for years, he had told us what he wanted done at his funeral. Mm. You know, wear bright colored clothing, play bluegrass, um, don't cry, I'm going home, that kind of thing. So um, the last day I saw him was on my graduation day, which was um, in, in 1980, May 18th, 1980. And this was the last vision I have of my dad saying, I love you, as he's mm. pulling away, you know, in the driveway. So that mm. was a great last vision. But he and my brother were going to Minnesota um, on a fishing trip, and they were on a small plane. One of my dad's former colleagues was going with them, too. So there was the three of them plus the pilot. And the um, owner of the resort had told them to buzz over the resort when they got there to let him know he was there so he could pick them up at the airport. And when they did that, some winds happened. It was a clear day, but some winds happened. They went to power line, went into fiery crash right next to the lodge God, awful. and uh my grandmother bless her heart she lived almost 102 she died a couple of years ago she thought it was a good idea about six or seven years ago to take me to the the, the crash site mm. and it was just total angst i could just still feel it you know it was mm. just very hard but i i collected all these little tiny pine cones and then I made these ornaments out of them and gave them to the family. And uh, I wanted to make, you know, lemonade out of my lemons. Yeah. So, 
Yeah. Amazing. Amazing. And you wrote a poem at that time about your yeah. grief. Tell us about that. It was a religious poem. Um, I have it in here somewhere. I mean, I could, I, I mean, it was, it was a religious one, but it was kind of one to um, kind of have, give strength to those of us who had just lost them and to give us hope. And um, it was read at the funeral. I, I couldn't read it, yeah. but it was read at the funeral and, and many people requested copies of it and so forth yeah. afterwards. So almost but, like part prayer and part poem in a way. Right. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Did it help you dealing with your pain? It did. And the funny thing is, is I've always been a writer and I've always known I was a writer. Mm. And, but until, you know, that time period in 2020, when I really started writing, I honestly could only write when there was an emotional component, you know, somebody had mm. to die or, you know, my children graduated, you know, and then I write something poetic, but now I can write off anything. You can give me a title. I write. I can look at something. I write. Right. So I don't know what finally clicked in there, but you know, I'm one of my best poems or my signature poem is called the ballad of Ned. And it's about bullying mm. as a child. I was bullied. Um, and it's very inspiring. Um, that has a little bit of a religious component, but I want to make that a novel someday because there's, I can honestly see, part of on the screen someday you know i can see this this little scene and i have a big storyline i actually picked it pitched it to a supposed playwright or a screenplay writer and he wanted to take it on but i didn't have the money to pay him so right. that didn't happen but it's i think it's very encouraging you know yeah. for people who do get bullied absolutely and, absolutely and growing up in the era i think we're approximately the same age people got bullied a lot you know, it was part of it. You were afraid to go to school sometimes. You ran home from school sometimes. Mm -hmm. It was, uh, my neighborhood was crazy. Um, so uh, it was just kind of part where of did it. You, so where did you grow up? I grew up in New Rochelle, New York, the suburbs of New York City. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah I bet yeah. it was. Yeah, yeah. It was, uh, it was a gritty little town. Um, so, you know, I, I definitely understand what you went through at that point. So... I think when you're talking about your poetry, how you used to need like an emotional stimulus to write. And now I think you've learned how to tap the emotions of your heart. I yeah. think almost like a method actor, you know how to reach inside you now and create that feeling, even if that feeling isn't there externally. Don't you think that's part of it? Yeah, I really can. I mean, I write a lot of fiction, but you know, you tap in from somewhere yeah, and from somewhere in the depths, you, um, you know, you, you emote. And yeah. so I've written, you know, many, many things about many uh, different, I, I write stories, but I also write a lot of romance or heartfelt things, but um, I, I can write about anything. One of the things that I do, I, you know, do this pop chat where I interview poets. Mm -hmm. And one of the things I do ahead of time is say, come up, ask the poet to come up with a title. And then we both write on the same title. Mm -hmm. And then we present it at the time of the event, That's which wonderful. is very um, unusual because, you know, you can have two very different, you know, uh, components at the same time. It's very unusual. Exactly. But. That's wonderful. Tell us for this book, for readers out there, is this kind of like a daily devotional in a way? You could read a poem each day and find inspiration, find peace. Tell us a little bit what you hope readers take away from your, uh, from your poetry. I think, I think um, that they probably can. Um, I think that there's a lot of inspirational things, a lot of heartfelt things in there. Um, you know, there's, there's little stories in there too, but um, you know, that along, you know, I have a couple other books I've written as well and I'm coming up with a third, another one yet. But um, I think actually my, my writing has gotten better. So I'm really looking forward to my, newer one coming, you know, into vogue here, hopefully in the spring. Wonderful. Do you have but a working title for that yet? I do. Poetry Menageries. That sounds great as well. Dealing a little bit with animals? Well, it's not because when you look at the definition, it can go into a collection of different things, not gotcha. just animals. But yeah, it does talk about animals. Okay, um, great. Yeah. Sounds great. Well, Annette Tarpley has written a wonderful book a 
book of poetry. It's called Poetry Potpourri. It's an eclectic collection that represents a deeply personal journey for her as she includes poems from various stages of her life. But from recognizing her life, you'll recognize your own life as well. The struggles, the joys, the hopes, the dreams. They're all there on the pages. They are magnificent and it is highly recommended. Annette, thank you so much for joining us here today on Spotlight. Thank you. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Uh, I enjoyed speaking with you a lot. And to the folks at home, I'm Logan Crawford, thanking you for your time, this time until next time, on Spotlight.